What's up everyone, welcome to the video today. Thanks for joining me. If you're not subscribed, hit that button and uh, follow me on Instagram because I'm kind of shadow banned on there, so follow me there. Um, let's just get into the video. Do a little bit of setup here. Maybe we'll do a little bit of shooting and talk. So what's up everyone, welcome to the video. Thanks for joining me and today we are talking about my Dead Air Sandman and E-Form 4, I guess. So if you're wondering, about this um, rifle. Maybe I'll do a video on it in the future if you're worried about this paint job. Um, yes, I know it's completely ridiculous. Not crazy about it. Maybe if this green was a little darker, it'd be a little bit better. Um, was bored one day and this is what we ended up with. If you look at the landscape out here. It is a little green and brown. Uh, maybe a little bit different of a green. I think all the stuff, grass and whatnot starting to die. So it's turning a little yellow. But um, anyway, you don't care about this. So to start off, once again, thanks for joining me. Um, I am in no way qualified to talk, get out of here. I am in no way qualified to talk about suppressors since this is my first one in this video. I might be calling it a can, a suppressor, a silencer. They're interchangeable. Get at me in the comments. Turn the camera a little bit, a little bit nicer backdrop there instead of just staring at my face. Let me just start off with going over my E-Form 4 um, experience and then we'll go from there. So I'm gonna get into this video with just some of the basics uh, cause I am a noob. If you're a noob and watching this, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining me on this noob journey. But um, your two main forms, or I guess E-forms that you would be dealing with through the ATF is your E-form one and your E-form four. So E-form one, from my understanding, is if you, the end user, is manufacturing it yourself, which I don't think they allow suppressors anymore. Um, you used to be able to do it with like solvent traps and stuff like that. I don't think they allow that anymore, but an E-Form 1 is what you would use to convert your AR pistol or whatever into a short barrel rifle or shotgun and whatnot. So E-Form 1 is what you're doing. E-Form 4 is basically buying it from the factory or from like your dealer. Um, I know there's more to this, but I'm trying to make it as basic as possible. So you're buying it from the dealer and uh, then they're gonna hold it for you and that process takes a very long time. So going on the ATF website, I believe like E-Form 1, they're saying, they're quoted, these are not true at all, but I think E-Form 1 is supposed to be like 30-ish days, and the E-Form 4, they're trying to get down to like 90 days. I'll tell you right off the bat, I bought mine in March, and it didn't get approved till the end of September. It was 208 days that it took for the approval for this. So E-Form 4 is what you are doing. Um, you're basically gonna have someone, an SOT, forget what that actually stands for, but your FFL slash SOT, which is the ones that can deal in the NFA items, I believe, might be wrong on that one. Fact check me if you want. Um, they're the ones that kind of handle the Form 4s, so you do have some companies like Silencer Shop that will kind of do that process for you. Even, I believe, Form 1s they help you with. Um, even though you just do those yourself, basically. I bought mine through a local-ish gun shop over here in Southern Utah called Modern Warriors, and they helped me with the entire process. It was kind of painless, other than just having to wait 208 days. So if you go to a place like Modern Warriors, I believe if you buy a suppressor um, that's over 700 or maybe over $800, they set you up with a free gun trust. Otherwise, you could just pay to do your gun trust. Um, I did the Dead Air Sandman which is eight and change, so it qualified for that. So I got a gun trust out of this. And from my understanding, the trusts take a little bit longer to get approval through the ATF. I don't know if that's just people making stuff up, but that's what I've heard. Mine took 288 days. I think if you go on like Reddit and stuff, people are getting them in like sub 200 days, like 160-ish. I think it just depends. It's kind of luck of the draw. Um, it is what it is, kind of sucks shouldn't have to pay a tax stamp for something that's basically just hearing protection because take your AR from I'm going deaf down to this isn't bad. So now let's go address the elephant in the room. Why did you go with dead air? So if you go back to March, there was no issues with dead air. As the year progressed, the Sierra 5, which was one of their newer cans, chambered in 556, was turning into a tactical maraca, if you will. Um, there are some people that have no issues with theirs, and there were some people that ran one magazine through their um, Sierra 5, and it just completely grenaded, and they couldn't use it anymore. And then sending it into dead air, I believe the process is taking forever. Uh, from my understanding, dead air uses a different company to do all their manufacturing and whatnot. So they're more of just like a uh, marketing 
salesman company and they're not the ones actually building the stuff, which is probably what's taking even longer. And then quality control is an issue, obviously. Um, no issues with the Sandman, but the Sierra 5, if you go back, especially look at like Reddit, they are getting shit on. I went with the Dead Air Sandman. This is the S, they do have a K and an L. This is basically the mid-size one, I guess you would say. I went with this because I did want a 30 cal can with some sort of quick detach. I know there's others out there. So far, no issues with this. I only have three or four magazines through this can. I was shooting 223 slash 556 through it and it is a 30 cal can, so I shouldn't have any issues with it. There is plenty of space in there, but I do have a 300 blackout build that I am in the process of doing that um, I do have an alignment rod that will be going in that just to double check everything because we don't want any issues. Now with the cans, you can get um, chemo, which is what this is, and there's Xeno. I don't know the difference. You could probably look up which is better. If either one is better, I don't know. Chemo is pretty cool though. Kind of just goes on, tightens down, and that's it. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to show that on YouTube. I know there was a big problem with that, so I'm not gonna show that, but you do have a little bit of a, there is a mark right there for alignment, and you just set that up on your muzzle device, slide it on, tighten it, and it's done. We'll just hear the sound. Then it's on. Last things kind of about this can is, you'll notice it is tan or FDE. Um, this is all they had in the store when I went. They didn't have it in black at the time. Obviously I would've went black because um, it works with this. This started out as a black rifle, but it kind of works with this. Not horrible. But the 300 black build that I'm doing, obviously it uh, doesn't match considering everything is black on this thing. We're obviously missing a couple parts on it too. Still waiting for those. Now, if you are a noob to suppressors, like I am still, uh, if you're shooting 5.56 out of it, um, if you're shooting 2.23 or 5.56 out of a can, it, uh, it does lessen the noise, but it doesn't completely kill it, like movie quiet. Uh, so your 2.23 and 5.56 round are still supersonic, so the noise that you're really getting is the bullet breaking the sound barrier. So you're getting that sonic boom, I guess, out of it. So it's not dead quiet. If you're gonna throw a round down range, no ears, um, not gonna aim at anything. Pretty loud. This ear's ringing a little bit. Definitely uh, a lot more bearable. I would never do that unsuppressed. But then when you move to something like 300 Blackout, you can get supersonic or subsonic rounds, which obviously subsonic underneath the barrier and is a lot quieter. I do not have any 300 Blackout rounds. Um, of course, right when I was gonna go buy at the place I normally buy from, it's completely sold out. Um, shit. But we will get into the, I guess, the rifle builds in later videos. This is kind of more about my Form 4 experience slash um, dead air experience. So, so far, no issues with dead air and it's been working pretty good. Hey guys, Future Chris here. Uh, one thing I completely forgot to mention while talking um, back in the desert over there was that your rifle may or may not run a little differently if you throw a suppressor slash can slash silencer on it because uh, you do have increased back pressure going back through your rifle so you could have malfunctions, your ejection pattern could be all over the place depending on if you're overgassed, undergassed, um, and whatnot. So they do have adjustable gas blocks you can get for your rifle or you can kind of tune that by just getting different buffer weights and springs and stuff like that to help mitigate those issues. But just keep that in mind, uh, your rifle may or may not run a little differently. Uh, if you do have a 30 cal can on a 5.56 gun, you won't have that much problem but when you get to be the size caliber that you're running, um, you do have a little bit increased risk of issues. 
back to desert, Chris. When you go through a place like Modern Warriors like I did, everything, they kind of save everything for you, so fingerprints and all that stuff, so you only have to go through the fingerprinting process once, and then they have it saved for you, so when you do future cans, SBRs, SBS, whatever else, um, kind of streamline process a lot easier. Uh, I always have a problem getting my fingerprints taken. For whatever reason, my fingerprints never like to show up. Even when I did my pistol license when I was living in New York, had a little issue getting my fingerprints done, and they got done, and very simple process. Got the approval email on the morning of the 25th, I believe it was, of September, and then maybe less than an hour later, Modern Warriors called me up saying it was approved to come and get my can, so awesome. But like I said about not being scientific, there are other channels slash pages and whatnot that are a lot more scientific that will give you decibel readings and whatnot. But like I was saying, main thing with it, you're still, it's still pretty loud, not crazy loud. I did shoot around with no ears on at all. It's bearable. You probably don't want to do it the entire day. Um, that's from shooting the round, but from behind it, um, it's completely, completely reasonable. We had a steel target set up and hitting the steel was louder than the round going off. Found one round, so uh, gonna throw that in. Gonna shoot another one, uh, no ears. Nailed it. Got a little smoke coming out the end. Fun times. I set up this target like over there somewhere. I don't know what the equivalent would be. Um, Cause this is obviously not a C-Zone steel. I think it's like six something by like 13. I don't know what the equivalent would be like if you shoot this at like 25 yards is that like shooting a C-Zone steel at like 50? I don't know. Maybe you could tell me down below but. All right, so the target is 50-ish away. Just gonna throw some rounds down range. Unsuppressed first. Like I said, very scientific here. So there you go, there's unsuppressed. My zero could probably be a little bit better, but unsuppressed, let's throw the can on. What do you think? And this mag. Not bad. I'm waiting for that suppressor to cool down so I can finish this video. Um, I need some water. If you're wondering why I don't perfect that zero that I have, I do have an LPVO coming uh, that's gonna go on that rifle. So I'm not gonna mess with that zero. Swap it out and then have to zero LPVO. Um, the little 300 blackout build we got going, it's a seven inch barrel. Have a Holosun AEMS on the way for that. Don't know where we're going after that, but suppressor, silencer, can, fucking awesome. Suppressor, if you don't have one, you live in a state that you can own one, I recommend go get one, because they're pretty awesome. Um, kind of makes shooting a little more fun. I mean, I haven't shot my AR that often, but now that I put the suppressor on, I kind of want to shoot it more, which I guess is a good and a bad thing, because then it costs me more money because I have to buy more ammo, but it's fun. Um, running around LARPing in the desert over here is kind of fun. Sandman S. Um, I would say it's good, it's not a Sierra 5. I know at least one person with the Sierra 5 that hasn't had any issues with his at all. Honestly, next can I am considering is the Huxworks Ventum 7.62T, I, I don't know how many letters are of it. It's the Huxworks Ventum, it's the brand new can. It is compatible with putting the dead air chemo um, quick detach system on it. So I do like that so I could switch between some guns because I'm probably getting at least one more rifle and I think that's it really. 
because I don't need that many. Um, other than like if I wanted to get like a lever action gun and then that would be tactical lever action and that's really expensive but really cool but I would wind up never shooting it and bolt gun to do some long distance stuff would be really cool also but I don't need that either. Um, yeah, if you don't have a can and you can get one, go do it, just start your weight. I know, I know the time frame is completely ridiculous but just buy one then forget about it and then eventually you'll get that approval. Mine was 208 days, which I was actually expecting it to take a little longer than that. 208 days sounds completely ridiculous. Just do it, just wait. It's worth it at the end. Shout out Modern Warriors for helping out, making this process pretty simple. They don't really need the promotion for me because they're just an awesome shop with a lot of cool dudes working in there. Um, so if you're in the Southern Utah, Northern, Northwestern Arizona, Nevada area, just, Go to that shop, it's a pretty badass shop. So once again, if you were a noob and found some of this info somewhat useful, leave some comments down below or subscribe if you think I earned your subscription. If you're not a noob and you just enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button if I earned it. Um, follow me on Instagram for sure though, cause like I said, I'm kind of shadow banned there. Um, so I could use whatever followers I get right now. Um, I'm gonna shut up. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, um, do all the things and stay strapped to get clapped.